He's fast. He's fury. Together, they're Battle Chargers. My Battle Chargers will crush the other one. Watch me, the The Transformers. The Transformers. Each sold separately from Hasbro. Wah, 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 wah. Thank goodness they were updated. Hey, what's up my fellow Transformers fans? Welcome to this episode of MP Squared Reviews. I'm your host, Mike. And today we are looking at uh, two bad boys from the Decepticons that are minimally featured in the G1 cartoon and have only had uh, some uh, really uh, lousy representation in the original G1 toy line as Battle Chargers, um, as you just saw a moment ago. Uh, and just in case you wanted to see some more of that goodness, here you go. Nobody jumps into action faster than Battle Chargers. Yeah. And uh, this background, uh, <laughs> I just wanted an excuse to use the Run DMC logo style. Uh, I hope you like it. I, I think it looks cool. Um, so that brings us today to these two guys. And these are a couple of Car Brothers who, unlike the Lambo Brothers, are bad dudes. So on the left, we've got Fast, a.k.a. Run Amuck. And uh, on the right, we've got Fury, a.k.a. Run About. And what's cool about their box art that XTB did was that if you switch the boxes, you get one picture of them in front of the Statue of Liberty. And this is the first time I'm seeing them put together side by side like this. Believe it or not, I hadn't actually looked at it until now. I had no clue what this reference was, uh, so I had to look it up. And uh, while they were minimally in the G1 cartoon, Run Amuck is in two episodes and Run About is only in one, they made a bigger appearance in the comics over the years. And this image is an homage to their appearance on the cover of one of the comics, as you can see here. So it's cool to see them actually do that joined box art. Now looking back at the G1 toys, uh, these, in my opinion, were really lame toys, as you can see here in the commercial. Um, they were wind-up, pop-up transformers that you didn't even have to transform yourself. Uh, sorry excuses for um, transformer toys. As you can see here in some photos, they didn't even have proper arms. Their uh, side panels just popped out to be arms. They had no hands. Their feet didn't come apart. They were pretty, pretty darn lame. Uh, so... Getting these obscure characters, or more obscure characters, uh, in masterpiece form is cool. So if you're a completist, um, I'm not going to be saying that I'm a completist, but I'm leaning that way. Um, otherwise, why would I have gotten these guys? So uh, we're going to check them out and uh, see how good they are um, as masterpiece toys. From what I've heard in the Instagram and YouTube realms, Fast is a good entry into the MP line from x -Transbots. Quick tour of the box. Saying on the side, if you're in control, you're not going fast enough. And there is the ratchet that uh, you've probably seen pre-orders for, as well as uh, images of, um, at least in the prototype and uh, computer renders. Uh, this is not a mold that I am excited for. All right, we've got the instruction manual and collector's card, his weapon, and the bot himself. Interestingly, against this white styrofoam, it has kind of a slightly purple uh, look to its pearlescent white. All right, nicely printed little booklet here. Looks like monochrome so far. Oh no, it's got a little bit of color here. Got highlights for the transformation. Nice. And then pictures in the bot mode at the end. And the bio card and a nice little mural on the back. And an extra insert with a little bit more instruction here. To me, these kind of things that they do or instructions that they change uh, signal to me that perhaps they rush to the finish line. Um, I just wish they would take a little bit more time and make sure that they've captured everything in the booklet and uh, that the features work for the character and everything like that. So uh, it is frustrating to have QC that's consistently not complete. Doesn't mean this is going to be a bad character. It's just something that um, I wish they'd be more consistent on. Last but not least, the collector's card. Decent illustration on the front. 
And there you go, character bio and strengths on the back. Nice collectible card on uh, this plastic card stock. And uh, let's take Run Amok for a spin. I really like those chrome wheels. Those look really nice. The left door is popped open. The rear wheels there look like they're splayed out, especially the one on the left. So maybe that's a matter of transformation, but uh, you know, it looks like there's something wrong with your axle or something. Uh, we got that right door that's open too. Let's see if we can't close those doors. Maybe a little bit, but uh, not perfect. The pearlescent paint, I'm not a big fan of. Um, I don't think it's accurate for um, cars of this age. You can see that XTB really tried to make something happen here, but the details in this engine compartment just aren't convincing enough to be an actual engine. So it really was, you know, uh, not a fully baked effort. And the interior here, uh, while I like the idea that doors can open up in alt mode, uh, generally speaking, um, this one opens up to an interior that you can't really use. Uh, I tried to put Carly from MP44 in there and she definitely does not fit. Plus you have to open up two sets of doors to get to the interior. And finally the rear window, uh, I wanna see a window that it's, is at least glossy. So it, even if this had been a gloss paint, it would have been better. But I really would have liked to have seen a plastic window like you see on Fury. Overall though, Fast's alt mode does look good. We'll just have to see about getting those doors closed and uh, getting those wheels to stay tabbed. There you have it, run amok. We've got the other half of the box art on runabout and a quick spin here on the side there. Nice close up on the character face, some schematic stuff, backside with the uh, profile and some uh, nice mural art there. And the top of the box, we've got the character name and everything. Uh, this side of the box, we've got the character quote, straight roads are for fast cars, turns are for fast drivers. So apparently he fancies himself quite the driver. And on the bottom here, we've got the up and coming Ironhide from X Transbots, which I am not in on. If you are, uh, let us know why in the comments below. And we've got the brochure and the collector's card here. We've got the weapon, which jumped out of the package. The collector's card is uh, nice. It's plastic, it's in this nice sleeve here, and uh, looks good. And you know, it's a nice sturdy card too. And the transformation instructions here, same kind of treatment, although we do actually have the red windows, which is cool. Um, I guess it doesn't mean that there's more colors in this one than there is for Run Amuck. And then some nice character pictures, and then the bio with the mural on the back. Interestingly, this guy does not come with an additional piece of instruction, so I guess they got it right in this booklet. So right out of the box, I can tell you that I like the way it looks. Uh, it looks a lot more dynamic on camera than it does in real life here, but I do like the play of the dark gray against the red windows, so that's cool. Let's take a look at it in a spin. Now, to my eye, um, I'm a little bit of a distance away from this thing, but it doesn't look quite as um, glossy, if I can use that term, as it does here on camera. On camera, it just looks super beautiful. Um, it's, it's still good looking to my eye, but it's a little bit more uh, plain looking. Um, that rear window, as a matter of fact, all the windows, they don't seem quite as contrasty in real life, and uh, therefore, they don't look quite as cool um, you can see, you know, that they're plastic windows. Uh, but um, otherwise, this thing's looking good. I just love the fact that they give the uh, car these real world uh, wheels. That chrome spindle look looks really awesome. The splits in the back of this window here, I'm not digging. They actually look okay. It's just that, you know, you, you know that a window's not gonna be split like that. Uh, but it's got some cool details that are reflecting light uh, to make it look kind of uh, techy and interesting. These dark accents here with that gas cap and uh, that little panel behind the passenger window are really nicely detailed uh, in a black. Yeah, I, I can't fault this alt mode. This alt mode looks really cool.
That is, it is looking good except for the now infamous square hole in the windshield uh, that uh, Robo Lucas uh, has a sticker for. So if you're on Facebook, uh, hit Robo Lucas up. If you're on Instagram, hit him up as well. Um, Jimmy Hauser on eBay was also selling a kit. I'll show that here in the video. But uh, you can get rid of that square hole in the windshield, which was done for apparently the only reason being that there's a steering wheel inside the car, um, which to get it out of the way, they actually had to carve a hole in the uh, inside windshield. And like XTB's run amok, XTB runabout's engine compartment also leaves something to be desired. It's like great ideas, XTB, and then, you know, you do something like that, not quite thought all the way through, it seems. There is some gappiness in the hood and uh, the front bumper. That split in the front bumper is quite noticeable and um, it's kind of a bummer that it couldn't have looked a little bit more invisible, but you know, hey, um, bot's got to split in order to transform, right? These tail lights actually flip around, um, so you can have two different tail light looks, although they're kind of uh, minorly different. Though not quite the same vehicle as a DeLorean, I think this could be a proxy uh, DeLorean uh, from Back to the Future. If somebody built a kit that you could put on this thing, I think it would be a cool stand-in for uh, a Back to the Future crossover, uh, which they've already done, uh, but uh, with a Masterpiece character um, instead. And how about that roll test? Right out of the box, let's see. Ooh, something's dragging there. Yeah, so that's a, that's a no roll right out of the box. We'll have to see how it rolls after it's been transformed into bot mode and back into alt mode. Also, this is the one of the pair which um, has reportedly had manufacturing issues uh, where things have been too tight. Uh, I believe like the thigh swivel was too tight. So we'll see if my copy has any issues as well. Okay, getting into the transformation right off the bat, this instruction here makes no sense. Um, it looks like you should be able to just slide the gun in there, but the gun has these tabs on the sides, which I do not understand from these instructions how those tabs are supposed to fit in there. Um, I've looked at it a bit. There don't seem to be any side tabs to allow these tabs to fit through. So, um, yeah. Thanks for the instructions that aren't really instructions, XTV. <laughs> um, I guess I'll have to figure it out during the transformation. It's probably, you know, before you put something back together, you slide this in there and it locks in. Um, but it's definitely not a transform it into alt mode kind of situation and then put the gun away. Um, at least it doesn't look like it is. So maybe something is mistransformed here, but um, I honestly couldn't tell if there was something here that I was missing. Doesn't look like it. All right. All right, so as I was transforming this guy, assuredly, yes, I was able to find out how the gun goes in there, and it is uh, the situation where you have to split the legs apart and the gun goes in there. So um, maybe that would have been cool if they actually had produced the bot like that and put it in the package like that so you could have uh, discovered how to get the gun out and how to put it away. But it is further on in the directions, so just be aware that, yes, the gun does place in there, and uh, it just that you have to <laughs> wait. So um, this installation thing is really just to show you that it does go in there, but it is not an instruction of how to do it. So, all right, there you go. Um, you have to wait till page five. All right, and this guy is looking really cool. Um, the transformation was fun. It's a uh, uh, panel-y. But um, actually, yeah, sur surprisingly fun. Um, this guy looks a lot better to me now that I've actually handled him and I've actually got him in front of my own lens and I've seen him with my own eyes uh, than when I was seeing him in other pictures. Um, I still don't think it's the best looking bot. I think there's a lot of, you know, line work that's going on here that's not like good line work. It's just panel-y line work. Um, but um, yeah, they did a great job updating this character, making this character... Well, and it's, it can't be thanks to them completely, right? I mean, it's been redone a number of times, but at least in the Masterpiece line now, we've got a Masterpiece-worthy contender for uh, the spot of Run Amok. 
One of the things I don't like about these designs that I've been seeing um, with various characters is the idea of hiding the cartoon accurate uh, like chest, like we see here. Um, underneath the alt mode real world canopy. Um, but hey, you know what? This is what we got and um, this character is looking pretty good. So I'm not gonna knock it too much, uh, but that would be one improvement that I would like to see. Um, I would like to see them actually do an alt mode that doesn't need a shell, um, you know, uh, and a bot mode that doesn't need a shell. So about the articulation, we've got a head swivel here and it does swivel 180 degrees because that's the way it starts is backwards. You've got a head tilt up, you've got a head tilt down. So um, not a huge amount of range there, but you do have them. Uh, so what about side to side? Oh, wow. You actually have a little bit side to side, real side to side. That's surprising. Um, okay, arm, you've got the full 360 around. You go at the bicep swivel. Uh, you only have this 90 degree bend. That was a bummer to find out. But you do have this butterfly joint here so he can reach across his body more, so that's cool. Um, we've got, let me switch to the other hand, other arm so you can just see the hand move. And the hand does rotate 360. You've got a single hinge pin here for all of the fingers. So no pointer finger, just they're all ganged together like that, but that's okay with me, uh, for this guy anyway. Um, he does have a little bit of an ab crunch. There you go. He does have this waist swivel. However, the waist swivel here is kind of a bummer. You see how these hips angle up when you, uh, you know, you want to move his, his hips into a certain position. And then they do collide with this abdomen piece right here. So be careful because I've already started to blunt the corners of uh, this abdomen connection here. Um, and they do, it, see, you can see it catches. Let me show that to you again. So it does catch. So you have to rotate this out of the way if you want. Oh, and it's catching, where is it catching? It's catching on uh, this other hip. So, you know, that does get in the way of that hip rotation. So you're probably best to uh, rotate those hips first and then um, figure out how that, uh, torso is going to move around these joints, but uh, I don't know if you can really tell here, but there's a little bit of plastic already coming up here on the corner. So beware of that. Um, kick forward. Wow. Yeah. Plenty. Kick back. Oh yeah. Plenty. He can skate all day. One thing that wasn't completely clear to me when I did the transformation of this guy was that you have to flip these double uh, faux wheels around in order to get the ankle to actually sit properly. Otherwise, what you get, if you don't flip these around, is you get it colliding. So it doesn't want to go flat. So if you're running into that, it's because you haven't flipped this probably. And it's as simple as that. I didn't uh, really... See, my attention really wasn't grabbed in the instructions by a mention of that, um, but thankfully uh, <laughs> I found out that you could swivel it before I decided to try to unscrew it and uh, to uh, put it back in in the way I thought it was supposed to be. But there you go. That trips you up. Make sure you did that. Um, I also don't like these skis that they've been giving some of their bots for feet, but... Um, you know, look at that. I can just put them down and it, it does stand without me having to maneuver it too much. Um, so that's a, that's a minor point, but uh, it would be nice if you didn't have to rely on such uh, ski looking um, heel spurs, you know. Uh, let's see what else. Knees. I'm not impressed with the knees. Um, not that they don't have good motion. Um, they are able to move. They do have a double hinge. So you can do some other stuff with them. You want to get that straight knee there. You can do his captain impression. Um, and then you can also bend it up here. So it's got those uh, couple of, you know, um, articulations in the knee. Uh, but 
it's not a ratchet knee, you know? So, um, yeah, I just, I would rather a ratchet knee. But, um, you know, I don't know that that really matters too much, but I'm just thinking that like, is that going to loosen up over time and, and, and become a problem, become a loose joint? But, you know, uh, we're not playing with these every day, right? Usually, most of us. Um, and if you are, kudos, because you're having a great time. Uh, let's see what else. Hip skirts. Yep, traditional hip skirts. Just flap up there. Uh, can he do the Van Dam? Let's find out. He cannot do the Van Dam. He is stuck at this height here. Uh, if we rotate his legs up, can he do the Van Dam? Uh, yeah, even if you get his legs like backwards, uh, nope, they just don't. They don't. They don't maneuver like that. They stop. So no Van Dam for this guy. But a really, really decent job for this character. Let me get him put back together real quick. So a really nice bot from XTB, a very minor character. Um, you know, they did an amazing job with what there is. And uh, compared to the G1 toy, I just don't think you really can compare. This guy looks and uh, performs pretty amazingly. Oh, yes. One thing I forgot about was the articulation of the ankles. And you do have this rocker here and you do have a um, little bit of a tilt up definitely tilt down uh, you've got this rocker sideways for days um, at least to the inside not to the outside so you've got this kind of articulation here that he's capable of and uh, I mean that's good for these poses right so uh, I think XTB did a decent job there too all right so I was able to get this thing all back together it was a challenge, especially figuring out, and I don't know really how I did it, uh, flipping these doors around because they do flip in reverse for the transformation. So um, follow the directions or find your favorite YouTuber who actually does transformations. I'm sorry, I'm not that person. Um, but um, it is back together. I am still dubious that the roll test is going to be that good um, because these wheels back here, they just seem like they want to be splayed a little bit still. They've only got a tab on the back part of the wheel here. Um, and I think that's going to be a problem. So we didn't do a roll test straight out of the box, but let's do a roll test now. All right, it rolls. Ooh, got a blow out there on that tire. Look at that. Came loose. Tab that back in. Refit the tabs. All right. Refit the tabs again. Okay. One more time. All right. After a fashion, yeah, it rolls. And it is not scraping like uh, Fury was. Okay, so I did have the problem that uh, other people have reported where one of the legs was just way too tight. Like, I, I just did not want to crank on that leg anymore. Um, it was not seeming to budge, and I did not want to break something. So I did disassemble it. You can see that here in this picture. And uh, the peg itself, the plastic part, seemed to be the problem. Um, it's a little too thick on the very top of the peg. It's got like a, maybe a little bit of a round to it. And um, it really rubs up against that die cast. And the cool thing about the thigh is that it is die cast, as you can see here. Um, those are two metal pieces. Uh, so that is cool. Uh, the peg is the problem. I sanded that down with uh, a little nail file, an emery board. And um, just be careful you don't shave it down too much because the leg did become a little loose. I'll show that here. So he can swivel really easily. It doesn't seem to affect his posing. Before I did that, I thought about getting a, a lube for the joint, and you might be able to get away with that without having to shave it down, although I think that peg really does need to be shaved down. But before you buy some lube, and this is what I found, uh, came recommended by other action figure collectors, um, was a 100% silicone lube. This is not cheap. Um, this was about uh, 
17 bucks, 18 bucks. Uh, I got it off of Amazon. Um, I'm not going to need to use it at the moment, but I do have it now for other uh, action figures that might have uh, sticky joints. So this stuff is cool because it's actually food grade. Um, so if you're going to be handling your bots, you know, um, why would you want to put something on there that you're going to handle and maybe get in your mouth eventually? Uh, that might not be great for you, so uh, why not have something that's food grade? So there you go. That being said, I have not tested that product out. I do not know how well it works. I just know that uh, silicone lube was something that was recommended in the research that I did. So Fury's bot mode um, is cool. It's got some differences in the way they engineered it. I'm not sure if it's just because they came up with new efficiencies. It almost seems like uh, Fast was actually engineered first and then um, they learned some things maybe and that's why Fury is different. But uh, I can't be sure about that. I'm not a designer myself. Um, I just thought that kind of made sense. But regardless of whether it's that or just that it's a different car type and so it needed to be uh, transformed a little differently, um, it does have some unique things to it. Um, one of those things being that the shoulders actually do uh, transform a little bit differently. Um, all the articulation is the same. Um, I did find out quality issues we'll come back to later. Um, but, uh, you know, you've got the 360 spin, you've got the arm out to there, you've got the 90 degree elbow bend. Um, you've got the same thing with the hips that you had with fast where you cannot do the Van Dam. Uh, and, uh, you know, for me, that's okay. You got that kick there. That's great. You've got this forward on the ratchet, which is nice. Um, the knees, if you notice a uh, difference between this and fast, uh, the knees are engineered a little bit differently. Um, maybe not too much differently. Well, they still have the, the dual swivel. So maybe, they're, no, maybe they're not engineered that much differently. Um, the feet, they fold differently, and I like that. It actually folds and then folds again and becomes a flat part of the foot, which I thought was just a much better... Um, way to tuck it away. So XTB, nice job. This is the ugly bit everybody's talked about. That is because of the steering wheel inside the guy. And I don't know why they couldn't have made the steering wheel the same they did as, uh, as fast, but they did that with this for some reason. So there are some ways to get rid of that. One of them is like I got here from Robo Lucas on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, also, he probably has a, uh, I forget if he has a YouTube channel or not, but look him up, Robo Lucas, and that's Lucas with a K. And he had a sticker set. Um, I didn't realize it was actually gonna be a actual full sticker set. We included some fun stuff too. Um, but he did a nice decal for the windshield and look at that color match. That's pretty dang close. Um, and then this extra stuff, I'm not sure exactly why, um, but there you go. That's going to cover that up. That's going to look nice and uniform. No more hole in the windshield. Uh, another guy that had a sticker set for this and for fast, uh, is Jimmy Hauser on eBay. I don't know if he still got them available, but, um, when I was, uh, Getting ready for this review, I looked that up and was going to order that and decided against it. The Robo Lucas uh, sticker set is good enough for me. But I have bought from Jimmy Hauser before and he does amazing work. As you can see here, in his completely custom kit for FT10 uh, to make it look like more of the Robotech bot that you got in G1. All right, so uh, some of the negatives. This arm seems to be a little bit loose. So I'm going to see about tightening that up. There is a screw um, that I can tighten back here. His back seems to come unhinged from its posts fairly easily. So that's not exactly cool, but it's not horrible either. When it does fit together, it does fit together nicely. Um, oh yeah, here you go. This waist is really pretty loose on its own. Um, so maybe I need to tighten something up there. There are some screws back here. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't seem to really affect his ability to pose or hold a pose. 
these little tabs here that make up the bottom of his abs, right here on the sides, they have a little metal um, bump that's supposed to help secure them. There you go, that's loose there. Bring this one up too. There you go, you heard that snap. So, very dark character, so it's hard to show him. But um, when you snap these into place, if you can see right here, I'll circle it, there's a little hole. That little hole has a little peg from this piece that pops into it so that it will hold it in place. So the little nub that's supposed to work on this side does not work on this side. Uh, so that comes undone fairly easily when you twist and pose. Um, but aside from that, it's not a big deal. Just want to give you that insight there. Oh yes, if you caught my video magic trickery when I supposedly quote unquote unboxed this guy, it was a reenactment of the unboxing. Um, and what came out of that box was not this red gun, but the black gun for fast. So this indeed does come with a red gun. I just wanted to call that out there in case you were such an eagle eye that you're like, wait a minute, that's a different gun. Um, and yeah, I think this guy's pretty dang cool, just like fast. Um, and I actually like them both now that I've messed with them and posed them and seen how they transform. Um, I like them more than I did. So how well does Fury actually roll once you've transformed him back into the car? And before we get into the roll test, I just wanted to show that the Robo Lucas windshield sticker is applied and we no longer have that tiny rectangle in the windshield that's dark. So we just have a nice uniform red windshield. So thank you, Robo Lucas. Uh, I really appreciate it, and um, it's a good fix. All right, not the most free rolling thing in the world, but it does roll, and it doesn't sound like anything is actually colliding on the tabletop with the underside. So yeah, it does roll. And this does do some things better than um, fast tabs these wheels in with a little rod. It seems to be a more secure fasten for these back wheels, so they're not splaying out like we saw on Fast. What else? I guess that's really the only thing, really. Uh, but there you go, um, it does roll. Oh, and you can put the gun in the bottom of the car like you can with Fast, same type of thing. It actually has to go in there while you're transforming it, you have to split the front open and put it in there so the tabs on the handle can actually sit inside this groove in here. There are a couple of uh, open slots on either side of the leg to uh, accommodate that. You can't just pop this in and out uh, without popping the front apart. And if you're a frequent watcher, then you may know what time it is. It is time for the MP Reviews Masterpiece Scale Comparison Test. All right, so just a quick note to let you know that uh, with both of these guys, I tightened up screws on them and I am much happier with uh, how they hold poses. Um, the arms are not floppy. Uh, I found out that Fast was floppy just like Fury was floppy in the uh, arm lift. Um, and uh, I was able to tighten both of those. So all around, I am much happier with uh, their stiffness. And one more note on stickers. Uh, I'm still not sure what this sticker is for, but it's cool that Robo Lucas included it. Um, maybe he's got a purpose for it, but I don't know what it is. And this set right here is uh, from Jimmy Hauser that I got off of eBay. And this is so that you can make Fast look more um, like a G1 uh, toy. So if you want a G1 toy look, this has got some cool stickers for that. So check out Jimmy Hauser on eBay. Um, I'm not sure if he still has these for sale, but uh, if he does, you can get yourself a set. And bringing in our MP scale standards, MP21 Bumblebee and MP10 Optimus Prime. So the scale standard that I use is the Freelance Graphics Scale by Mike Lorber. Uh, he did a lot of research uh, into this scale and uh, I go to it for my you know, basic understanding of scale as it should be as derived from the show. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let's bring Optimus Prime in and I was surprised to see these guys being as tall as they are on Optimus Prime, honestly. Uh, I, for some reason, thought they'd be smaller, but uh, they are quite large. Uh, so, how do they stack up here 
in the X-Transbots form. Bringing in our MP Reviews ruler, we'll put this on the top here and over to Optimus Prime. And as you can see there, it comes to uh, about the bottom of the chest. And if we look at the scale, we can see that uh, actually their hoods should be um, actually more toward the uh, top uh, third of the chest. It should come up about two thirds of the way up the chest. Uh, so these guys are technically too small, uh, according to the freelance graphics scale chart. Now, is that going to ruin it for me? No, it's not going to ruin it for me. They're plenty big. Um, I don't have to have things perfectly scale, but I do appreciate the amount of uh, research that Mike Lorber did in this scale chart. So that is why I use it, and uh, I appreciate everything that he's done to make that chart available. So there you go. MP scale is that they are a little bit too small. So how do I feel about these two bad boys from the Decepticons that are featured very little in the G1 cartoon and had uh, some very inauspicious uh, incarnations as G1 toys? Uh, basically, um, you know, they weren't that good uh, as battle chargers. But um, these things, there are only options, number one, for Masterpiece, run about and run amok. And, you know, it, they're good. I'd say that uh, Fury is definitely better than Fast, um, in the alt mode, um, it really does seem to me like they ran version one on this guy and were like, let's tweak some stuff for, for version two here. I don't know if that's really true. Don't quote me. Um, I don't want to badmouth uh, Keith and XTB. I just want to say that uh, whereas this guy keeps his wheels uh, straight and everything, this guy, even when I was just putting him here, um, his back we wheel was splayed, his front wheel became splayed, you know, so it looked kind of like he was a, a broken down um, jalopy. As a pair, they're fine. I like them both. Uh, I've said it before in this review, I like them more than I thought I would, uh, more than I did when I just saw them in pictures, because honestly, they do look paneling when they're in their bot modes. Um, and, and with all the lines here for uh, transformation in the hood and the fact that this, the front has to split, I mean, they're transformers, right? So you're gonna have to allow for some of that. But, uh, you know, the pieciness of the back window here, um, the fact that the back window here is not a window and it's just painted, um, aren't my favorite aspects of this, but for this guy, it works. Um, for some reason, it just, uh, with, with the windows you can see inside here, there's a lot of geometry going on in the windows. So it kind of fits. Um, it kind of looks like an intentional, cool 80s technology design, you know? Um, so, I think, uh, you know, as long as you don't mind a little bit of fiddliness with uh, Fast, then um, I'd recommend these guys. Um, I'd give Fast a 7.5 out of 10, and I'd give uh, Fury a good 9 out of 10, aside from the QC things. Uh, so maybe bring that down to uh, an 8.5 out of 10. All right, that's it for this episode of MP Squared Reviews. I'm Mike, your host. Thank you for joining me for another episode. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to leave a comment, leave a comment. And if you like this channel or you're a frequent watcher and you like this channel, then hit that subscribe button finally. And uh, hit that notification bell as well so that you get notified anytime a new video drops here on the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. And until then, happy collecting, everybody.